All right, guys, welcome to episode 175 of Dope Talk TV. Is yours truly low key? We got John here with me, and today we have a very special guest. Ari Gonzalez is in the motherfucking building. Round of applause to her. She came through, she's showing love. We appreciate you for coming and showing love, man. And uh, yeah, man, we're back with another one. We appreciate you. Go check us out on Patreon if you haven't done so already. Get yourself some merch, all that good shit, man. But we're back with another one. How we feeling, guys? How we feeling? Good. Yeah. Really good. <laughs> Tired. Everybody's good. <laughs> hey, Tired, that work life, right? That work life. Yeah. 24 7, 365. Hey, that's what a lot of people don't understand. You know, mm-hmm. you got to get it. You got to get oh, to that's it. That's such yeah. an interesting conversation, though. Like, the difference between a, mi- a nine to five and entrepreneurship. Like, Let's talk think, about it. Let's talk about it. I think, like, when you get your own business, you, you know, you set your own hours and you do. No, 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 no. No. No, I <laughs> You're agree. every waking fucking hours. You're more on other people's schedule own. than you are on your own. I completely agree. Depending on what you do, you know, like if you make soaps and shit, <laughs> make yeah. soaps and shit. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Because it's like you, yeah. But if you're interacting with other people and your company is contingent on interacting with other people, then yes, absolutely. Yeah, and I feel like you got to have the right personality type for it too, like. For some yeah. people, that would be, like, for me, that's draining. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, it drains your energy, bro. You got to cater to this person, that person they call you. You got to show up. Like, it's a lot. But that's what you want, you know? So mm-hmm. if it's what you want, you got to go for it. You got to fucking go for it. Yeah. Definitely not everyone is built to be an entrepreneur. Not everyone is built to be in, like, different industries. Right. But right. You got to have the right mentality, man. You got to have the right... Like I said, the right personality for it. And it's not easy, man. That shit's hard, bro. That shit's <laughs> hard. Dealing with people, I feel like it's one of the hard, like, it's one of the best things you can learn to do is mm-hmm. how to deal with people because it's such a big asset, bro. Like Dealing with people, yeah, and also managing them because she's a manager. So imagine, like, all the bullshit you got to deal with, all the stuff in the background that people don't really realize. <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. you go up to the show, but y'all don't realize the process and the people we had to hire to get everybody here to... You know, the lights, the sound, like all these Mm -hmm. things, like people don't realize that I didn't look into it. I didn't realize Mm -hmm. it until later that the business side of the music industry is kind of crazy. No, it's all business. It's different. It's all business. different. You know what I mean? Like it's different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, listen, man, the music industry is one of those businesses where it's really lucrative. So it gives a lot of people jobs, bro. Like everybody wants to be the artist, but. Mm -hmm. There's road managers, there's managers, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's different people that are a really big piece of the puzzle. Because, honestly, a lot of artists are just that. They're artists. They're not too, you know what I'm saying, punctual. They're not, you know what I'm saying? Like, Mm -hmm. there's certain things where it's like, that's where the manager picks up the slack. You know what I mean? And it's hard, man. It's it's like babysitting grown adults. No, that's (laughs) literally... When you first, like, any time that you first start learning about management, that's the first thing you're going to get told, is half of the job is babysitting. Mm -hmm. And it's very true, but that's why, um, like, personally, I don't deal with clients that I can't, like, the best way to put it is I can't want it more than you. I can't make you give a shit about your own career. So, like, I really only work with clients that, are on top of their shit that practice every day and do actually <laughs> like sit and work on their craft often uh, and who give a shit about it to like actually show the work ethic. Cause other than that, like it's the same thing. Anyone in the music and nobody can make anything happen for you. Mm. A lawyer can't make any, ha- anything happen. A manager can't ha- make anything happen. Not even your agent can make anything happen. Um, right. They can definitely help you, but it's it's all like a team effort. So, of mm-hmm. course, you know, I think there's a perception that, of course, you know, there's artists that aren't on time and, and they slack and stuff like that. But to get to that point, it, it is difficult to be an artist. Like, you do have to do a lot of running around. And um, in order to, like, appease people in the industry, mm-hmm. like, you do have to have a certain level of professionality, like, in these spaces. Um, I think that a lot of artists, you know, their team's push a certain like persona and things like that so we don't get to see that aspect of them um but like definitely yeah like to be anywhere at the top you have to have a certain kind of work ethic and like i said just uh, (laughs) understand how to interact with people yeah for sure because your job is to connect the dots but they got to put in the work to actually maintain that relationship and it's also like if you if you don't and you know there's some caveats to this like there's some people who are shitty performers who still 
sell out shows you know what i mean um but if you don't put the time in to perfect your craft uh, <laughs> let's say you make music that you know is good to dance to and you don't have a, a team of dancers behind you you're not in rehearsals and things like that mm-hmm. it's just a certain like caliber of of art that you want to exude you know what i mean mm-hmm. like in order to get somewhere and of course when the further that you get into it you get people who handle those things for you and you really are just kind of like the puppet on the string um this is funny one of my friends was making a video about like summer walkers uh recent album and just how many writers are like on each song and people don't realize like that's the reality like for the most part most pop hits and i don't mean pop as in like pop i mean popular music yeah, popular that's music. out um, you you have probably have like 10, 15 writers on each of those songs and that's why they work well is because you have so many different minds like focusing on what's going to be best for the public and you mm-hmm. have so many different perspectives which is something that's that's lost when you're like an indie artist who's doing everything DIY like you don't have 10, 15 yeah. people like telling you like oh no this sounds best and this sounds best and it's just what to, in my opinion when you know when minds converge with each other that is a beautiful thing and of course doing art by yourself is beautiful as well but in a a consumer economy you have to think about the listener and like of course you want to make music that you like but if you want to make money you got to make music that other people yeah the masses gravitate to Mm -hmm. and that's true and that's we've talked about it here before i've said it before we're like kanye for example like people that are around him they say that he'll take a line from a pizza man like a pizza guy will show up and he'll say some shit. He'll be like, say that again. That was dope. And I actually give him credits, you know what I'm saying, on the song for helping, like, that verse or whatever. So you could take inspiration from anybody, bro. Like, you just you, you just got to be open to it. But a lot of times it's like a lot of artists have that ego, you mm-hmm. know, where it's like, nah, fuck that. I don't want nobody writing for me. I don't yeah. want to do, like, nah, I could do it on that my used to own. Be me. And, yeah, we all go through that <clears throat> stage, man. But it's like. You got to open your mind up and realize, like, bro, 15 minds are better than one. <laughs> like, at the end of the day, it's just... A team. Team effort. Exactly. Exactly. That's true. And, you know, there are some people that are stubborn on it. And my thing is, at the end of the day, it's your art. So if you don't want people to be, like, working with you and you want to do everything solo, there's plenty of people who have done great work doing everything in-house. Of whether course. that comes to production, engineering, writing, everything. Mm-hmm. And um, so, like, if that's your art and that's what you want to do, that's fine. I'm just more about, like, encouraging experimentation within, within artistry because a lot of people... Um, a lot of artists get way too comfortable like with with what they're doing and they don't branch out and that is like kind of the death of everything like if you just yeah just being complacent and not being too comfortable like you need to try new things when it comes to your music you need to try new things when it comes to the people how you interact with people how you are on stage like all these things um nobody likes to like just hear the same shit over again and see the same shit over again like you have to continue like elevating in every yeah, aspect you know? i agree yo i told one of my boys that you know what i'm saying i told one of my boys i was like yo nobody wants to keep seeing 15 niggas jumping around in a house with guns mm. you know what i mean like eventually something like you gotta you Switch gotta diversify up. yourself you gotta show that you could do different things bro you know what i'm Be saying versatile. like that's cool too and that there's a market for that but it's very small you know what i'm saying like compared to compared to uh, for example, like a Pitbull. When Pitbull used to rap rap, I mean, yeah, he was he was doing shows, he was doing his thing, but when he started going, Mr. you know, Worldwide. when he started changing his music and, and just singing to girls more, you know what I'm saying? Just different things, like, it, it blew up for him. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, but I, I agree, like, as an artist, you're the artist. You, if you do what you want to do with your art, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? But let's go back to when you were, you know, when you were younger. Okay. You said that you... Uh, <laughs> You said that you knew from a very young age that you wanted to do music. Yeah. So how'd that start? Um, well, if we want to take it like way, way back. Um, Let's do my, it. My dad migrated to the U.S. from Puerto Rico when he was like seven and grew up in Spanish Harlem. <laughs> so we're all, we're all, we're all, all of us. But he was, he was, a, he was a writer. Um, mm. So in, in many ways, like poet actor but graffiti writer as well um oh he was he was out there yeah that's dope you know um, that's dope (laughs) in in some ways in some ways not but (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> but um, yeah, so he was, you know, very creative within his own right. Um, and then on my mom's side of the family, she was always in like musical theater and choir and stuff. And that my mom's side of the family actually used to put on like shows for the neighborhood. Really? Yes. Like That's they would dope. put on like holiday shows and events and stuff like that. Um, and honestly, like on my mom's side of the family and my dad's too, it's very much like eat good food, listen to good music and dance. Like that's mm. pretty much like what I was brought up around. And um, I was just always like surrounded by music in any way. So like I did musical theater and I did choir and I did dance and I did all these different artistic things. And like when I was super into painting and drawing and stuff, I like, you know, I'm always using music to inspire what I'm, I'm putting on the paper. So music was just always the thing that was like stagnant, like things would change and I would try different things, but music would always stay around. Mm. And, um, yeah, I mean, once I was in middle school, this is what I was telling you a little bit about. I, I started going to open mics and stuff and started like expanding my, my network in terms of like other creative people. Cause I went to, I lived in a very like preppy white area in Florida. Um, which was like just not kind to me and mm. so like in middle school I started like finding some of my people and um ended up being a part of a, a rap group called poser boys which unfortunately <laughs> you can't find anything like no yeah, bro I That's it's like sad because from we history? made some good it, erased Fuck, from man. history like poser and, boys motherfuckers yeah, we, and we made some good <laughs> shit like we like it was a lot of like young talented people and i was like the only yeah i was the only girl who was involved um and i just laid like vocals for them and that's kind of when i started getting the taste of being on the business side and working with the group and like that kind of interaction in high school i didn't want to go to college i was like i'm gonna just continue doing the the music thing trying to be an independent artist and eventually did go to full sale after they um, like did something at my school. I ended, like I graduated early from high school, so I I moved to Orlando on my own. Like right after I turned seventeen, and um, started college. You're ambitious as fuck, bro. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean she, she, got her, she got her she bachelor's said degree in 17, music. Seventeen, right? I graduated yeah. early. Mom, I'm out. Peace. Yeah, I mean, she was. She was proud and scared, you know what I mean? Scared like, as you know, fuck. You're, you're young, <laughs> you're young parent, bro, a 17-year-old, 18-year-old daughter just, all right, I'm out. It's like, yeah. fuck. Like, the chances, you know what I mean? Of chances of you succeeding at that, it's like, man, you're worried. You're like, ah, oh, man, I remember when I was 17. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nah, but you got to follow your dreams, man. That's important, bro. Like, as a parent, you might think that you know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, what's best for your child, but... You got to let them experiment. You got to let them live their life and just figure it out. Because, like, going back to their generation, a lot of them weren't given that chance. They were like, no, dancer, bro, you're going to be an engineer. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, that dance and shit don't pay the bills. We could dance on the weekends. Or you know like, what I mean? Like, Or if a family real. owns, like, a family business and they're expecting you to take, you know, like, to keep mm. going and keep it going. Like, that's mm. tough. Facts. I and there's, I feel for those kids because it's like, bro, that kid might not want that. Like you might work, you might have worked your whole life to pass down a business to your son, and he's like, "Dude, I just want to like it. travel the world. <laughs> yeah. and, like, <laughs> I want to live in a yeah. fucking boat somewhere, you know? Mm -hmm. Real shit. You got to let people be themselves, man. That's mm -hmm. important. That's but, important. Th I mean, that's one of the reasons that I'm so like I have my mom, oh, little mom tattoo. Hey, here. That's, oh, because, shit. that's dope. Well, okay. because she has always been so supportive of me, and like, sh like. I grew up with her like as a single parent, mm -hmm. and um, round of applause to all the single moms. Shout out, period. mommy too. Um, yeah. And like she had her own business, it, she does like HR for automotive companies, and she's like a superstar in her industry. And she just always supported me in everything that I do. Like when I was like, okay, I want to start singing, I was immediately in lesson. She was like, we're gonna foster that. Once I said I want to start dancing, okay, we're gonna enroll you in classes. Like, That's dope. let's foster that. You sing and really good too. Thank you. She sings really Thank good. You. Does she? I, yeah, like really, really. Yeah, I'm she has a voice for I sure. I do a little something. For yeah. Sure. <laughs> yeah. You also um, you do like instruct like you teach people how to like sing right. Like so I don't do vocal coaching, but okay. I do education in the sense of um, like I'll teach you what I know about the industry. Or mm. yeah, so like because 
every every artist wants a manager, but most of them don't like they don't have shit to manage. Like and it's <laughs> and it's no like yeah. it's no, <laughs> no offense, shit, it's bro. no beef. But you gotta it, have a catalog, dog. Like, it's, it's that, but it's also like people don't. Uh, let me just break this down. If be you real. Have, just be if real. You, so if you have a manager, you're either working on a commission or a retainer. If you don't have five thousand dollars a month to drop on the retainer, and that's how they work. That's how they work. If you are on a commission basis and you sign a contract where you're doing fifteen, twenty percent, I'm not making anything if you don't make anything. Right. So why would I work with you? And it's no right. fucking. Beef. It's a business. It, it doesn't mean that you're not good and that I don't have faith in you. Like nah, you're I, the <laughs> clients that I do have right now are the people that I have the most faith in and that I'm willing to build from the ground up and truly invest. Yep. But like moving forward, I can't. You know, dreams don't pay bills, and I'm sorry. That's how it goes. Yeah. But it, it it's just how it is. And if you like, I said, if if I'm making a commission on your net sales because I never do gross because if you don't make money, I don't want to make money. That to me, that's fucked up. Um, but it's just if you're if you don't have anything yet, what am I? What is a manager gonna do for you? Right. Do think learn this industry on your own. Do shit for yourself so that. Because I'm also a big proponent of, like, learn so you don't get fucked over. Mm -hmm. If you have a manager on your team, like, way before you need one, and you never have to interact with anyone who does PR, you never have to interact with publications and radio, like, you don't know what you're walking into once you get around people who really want to fuck you over. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So that's why I'm a big proponent of, like, education is everything. Because if you don't know, I can't fault you, but if I put it right in front of your fucking face and you just do nothing about it, then there, I can't help you. There's nothing I can do. So I'd rather artists learn this industry, understand how to actually build a business off of this, actually how to market yourself, get your paperwork in order, mm -hmm. and grow from there. Like, build your team from there, and then see where it takes you. Then then bring on your agent. Right. Then bring on your PR person. The first, You shouldn't be talking to me before you if you don't have an accountant and a lawyer. Facts. Yo, she knows what she's talking about. Round of applause. Did you hear that? Round of applause. <laughs> Motherfuckers. Don't even talk to me yeah. until you Don't get even. a lawyer and a fucking accountant, bro. Don't waste your fucking That's breath. Just, no, I'm telling you, she's speaking facts, man. No, but real. it's true. Like you, I feel like you got to build yourself up. And it's so cliche, but it's true. You got to build yourself up until somebody, you know, you got to catch motion on your own, bro. And, mm -hmm. and walk into certain rooms on your own and shake certain hands. And you know what I mean? Like. It can't all be just, oh, I'm going to go get a manager and they're going to build my career through. Like, that's not how that shit it's goes. it's not going to happen. Yeah, no, exactly. It's not like, going to happen because when you're starting out, there's like three different managers that you can run into. You could run into me and the, with the clients I have who I just re I met them really early in my career, really early in their career. And we're growing together, which is fine. And that's a great relationship if you want to have one. If you have a friend, if you're an artist and you have a friend who wants to learn about the industry, and like help you out i'm not saying don't have that relationship because that can be a great working and growing relationship mm -hmm. but the other kinds that you're gonna find is you're gonna find someone who's doing a favor for someone else so let's say you have a family member who works in the industry who knows this this manager who is a of a relatively high caliber they're not they don't give a shit about you they don't Fair. give a shit they're doing a favor for somebody else so you're not going to get the highest caliber of their work because they have clients who are making them tens of thousands if not hundreds of thousands of dollars a month and mm -hmm. you they have to build you from the ground up um it's a risk yeah it's or more of a risk. you know or you're gonna meet someone who just doesn't know what the fuck they're doing which <laughs> is is fine and like i say if you want to grow together with someone that's great like you're like you're gonna make mistakes along the way um but if you want to work with like a, a manager of a very high caliber who's already working with very large clients you're going to have to fight for attention with superstars, which is very hard to do. Like, your lever you just don't have any leverage when it comes to, like, competing for that manager's attention. And that's the, to me, that's the the worst thing that you could do. Like, mm -hmm. That's crazy. Yeah, Holy bro. Holy shit. Listen, man. Guys, you're hearing it here. You're hearing it here, bro, from the horse's mouth. You got to get your shit up. You, you got to get things in order. Get your paperwork straight. Get certain things in order before you head up a manager, man. Like, that completely makes sense. Like, it, it completely makes sense. You got to be covered on all bases first. But it, it's it's crazy to think about. <laughs> real shit. It's crazy like to I think about how, mo how yeah. most people didn't, you know, 
most people just don't they're not business minded man and art is art but everything behind it is business and mm -hmm. that's the part that ends up depressing a lot of artists man there's artists that go into the industry like oh it's just i want to express myself and be creative and show my art but mm -hmm. there's so much more to it that it's like there is. you gotta be on the if you re, let's say you do blow up now you're on the road six months out of the year you're traveling from here to there you're not you don't really have a stat you know you mm -hmm. don't see your family you don't like there's just so much that comes with it that you really gotta know what the fuck you want and you really gotta yep. if if you don't if you really don't want it don't waste people's time mm -hmm. you know what i mean because i'm sure yep. you've had that a lot too where it's like people just come and they're like oh i want to do this i want to do that but it's like what are you really like you said what are you doing behind it like mm -hmm. you you got to give a shit before i do you yep. know there's a lot of artists um they don't want it as bad as they say that they do and that's that's okay right like, i never want to like rub anybody the wrong way because if you don't want this that bad that's okay if you want to just like chill and make cool art and beers that's fucking fine like there's nothing wrong with that but if you are trying to like chase your dreams in this career and go somewhere there's a certain there's a certain shit that you have to do like i'm not gonna name any names but there's a couple people that i've you know i always say that i'm not that gonna I've name like no names. <laughs> consulted with it it's like i tell you you need a website i tell you that you you need social media and it's like i don't want to do that Ooh. I'm sorry in today's if you it's if this was work. fucking 60 years ago maybe you could make that happen yeah. like basing shit off of word of mouth and solely like print material and stuff like that which is still important but mm -hmm. when it comes to the digitization of the industry like if you don't have a home base where your fans can go and find shit out about you I can't help you and if you if you can't understand that there are just certain things that you need to do like you need to have an actual business entity you mm. need to actually be registered with all of your royalty collectors not just your fucking aggregator like you need to have an accountant you need to have a lawyer you need to budget your entire life like Facts. These are things that people just don't realize. And there was something that I wanted to mention about the whole, like, seeking out a manager. If you're seeking out a manager, you're not ready for one. They mm. will come and find you. Yeah, that's a fact. Once I, you're ready. You know ready, what's crazy? I was always told that by people. Mm -hmm. They'll find you, bro. And Definitely. how many? Whoever it is. Like, uh, like if you're good at yeah. what you do, for real, they're coming, nigga. Like, like, somebody's going to come talk to you. Mm -hmm. how, how many? Uh, as soon as you get off the stage or whatever, like, somebody's coming to talk to you. How many managers? I mean, like, how many... Uh, artists can a manager have at so, like one time that depends on what your structure is so like okay. me i'm a one woman show i do everything myself if i didn't mm -hmm. so yes i do management i'm also a talent agent so i work in like film and tv and i also run an entire uh music department at uh, a company down here called wtf so are we the future so if i That's didn't dope. do if yeah. i didn't do that i would i could probably take on four or five semi-comfortably um okay. but if you have a firm that's a whole different story because you have different accounts and you have assistants you have people you have interns you have a whole bunch of people working on it's, it's a full corporation opposed to me i do absolutely everything by myself so with a firm you essentially have like fleets of managers who are going to handle probably five or six accounts each of those managers so a firm depending on how large the size is you could have anywhere between like 50 to 150 artists mm. on your roster because you have oh, that's a lot shit. well because Holy you have shit. so many it's a, it's a team it's not just what like a firm is not just one manager okay. you have no 10, I, i'm 15. just saying holy shit because i'm thinking about the I money generated yeah. through that motherfucker 150 artists and, oh my god you know I, and just to like mention like you do not need to be a superstar to to like support yourself right and right. They're, like everyone wants to be super big i want to win a grammy mm -hmm. i want to do this and that's cool like if you have those goals go, go yeah, for them yeah, exactly. but yeah. also don't just and i don't mean this to like you know i don't want anyone to settle but it's like don't get beat up at yourself if all you can do is live comfortably by making music and you're not the most famous person Thank that you. there's Thank no you. reason to like if you have if you have a family that you could provide for mm -hmm. and you're comfortable you're living the way that you want to mm -hmm. you got a little extra money to you know take a trip and you're doing what you love be fucking happy with that right like because right. not everyone can be the star but exactly. there's plenty of room for people to like be a middle class artist because that's really what mm -hmm. it is 
and and there's such a high demand like Damn. for music bro like music is being dropped so often that there's a really high demand for it and there's people out here that you've never heard of getting paid six figures a year to write for people mm -hmm. they're sitting at their house comfortably writing for people bro you know <clears> what i mean and there's different there's a lot of different pieces to the puzzle man and you know like you said you don't always have to be the drake you know what i'm saying like yeah. if that's what you want to do bro hey go for it you i know, didn't think about it like the that. limit but it's true bro it's like true. there's people out here making eighty thousand, a hundred thousand a year you know what i'm saying off their streams, mm -hmm. and streams just and shit, right? merch and mm -hmm. just being independent you yeah. know what i'm saying like it's not just all stream you yeah. know what i mean like yeah. there's other yeah. things you got to do too but merch and all that yeah like there, but there are independent artists that aren't really known like that like mainstream that mm -hmm. are doing very well for themselves doing bro. great a great example of that is sync generally so like talking about streams and stuff unless you're pulling in real numbers like 200 300 000 a month yeah um you're really not making any money off of streams in general but yeah if you have a merch shop especially something i would like recommend for artists is make merch that people actually want to wear that actually looks fucking cool because there's going to be people who find that merch who have no idea who you are and they're going to buy it because it looks cool mm -hmm. and that's what it's all about is generating that revenue touring is another money maker but it's, it's also very expensive to tour so you have to that's where that budgeting sure. and having a, a business manager and accountant comes into play but sync what I started this off with is that a lot of people make their money, a lot of producers specifically make all of their income off sync. You're getting $10,000 contracts. If you have at least one of those a month, you're good. And then you're making residual income on those royalties. And that's a huge money maker in the industry that it doesn't take a lot of work, especially if you're working with a composer, they're telling you exactly what they want. That's nothing. But as an artist, um, once you start getting some traction, you know, those opportunities can come to you, but we're beginning to build relationships with music supervisors and other composers and just people who, like, if you're younger and you're starting out, people who make short films, people who mm -hmm. are do student films and stuff like that, who are going to need people to to have their, their music in, in whatever they're doing. And you can start out small, but the more that you build your catalog, like, there's a lot of money in sync. And mm -hmm. it's something that I talk about a lot. Um, because there is so much money in it and you don't, it, it's it's all about like publishing and the exploitation of your work. I have one song, right? I want to make sure that I'm exploiting it so I can get as much money out of it as I possibly can because we know streaming, I'm not making shit from it. Facts. So I want it to be in a commercial. I want it to be in a show. I want somebody to use it as their podcast jingle. I want, Ooh. you know, every any, any possible thing that I could think of to make a dollar off of this work. Mm -hmm. Damn. That's smart. That is smart. That's smart. There's other well, listen, ways. What 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 would be the number one piece of advice that you would give to an up and coming artist? Number one piece of advice. Just learn about the industry, bro. Just actually put in the time to know the history, to know how it works, um, and how to not get yourself fucked over. Like, because truly, like like I said a little bit earlier, if you don't know, I can't fault you. But, like, go get the information so that you don't look like a fucking dummy. <laughs> Truly. Like, and if you want to get it from me, get it from me. Like, I have courses that I've built. A lot of what I do um, is education and development for independent artists. Cause yeah, plug yourself in. Let them yeah, know. I mean, Where can they find you? Uh, yeah. You can find me at, on Instagram at N-A-D-I-E-S-A-B-E official. That's Nadia Sabe official. Harry will put um, that, like, right here. I'm pretty sure he will. That's a bet. For everybody. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, but that's that's a lot of what I do. It's, it's important for you guys to know what you're getting into. Um, and I, that's, yeah. That's <laughs> awesome, man. That's, that's, that's awesome. That. You've dropped some fucking knowledge. Oh, yeah. Round of applause to you, man. Thank you. Round of applause to you, Ari. You've been a fucking pleasure to have. But listen, man, we appreciate everybody that's rocking, liking, sharing, subscribing. Don't forget, go over to Patreon. Check us out over there. Get yourself some merch if you haven't done so already. And last but not least, tell somebody you love them. Peace and love. Peace and love. Peace and love. Yo, you dropped some fucking jabs.